It's an unwanted title, Coronavirus Super Spreader, and unfortunately it's been awarded to the cruise ship industry. In Australia and all over the world, cruise liners have proven to be the perfect host for the disease. In confined spaces with lots of happy people, COVID-19 thrives. The companies which operate the ships tell us the well-being of their passengers is their priority. But tonight, Tom Steinfurt reveals how profits are the real captains of this industry. They're marketed as floating palaces for holiday fun. But there's a nasty underbelly to the cruising industry. You've effectively worked on the dark side previously. What's the playbook? The playbook is admit nothing, get away with everything you can. They're a uh, dirty bunch, uh, quite frankly. Now, with thousands of passengers globally suffering from COVID-19 caught on these ships... I was so sick that I was, I was worried that I was going to be left on that ship to die. It's becoming clear that cruise companies knew much more about coronavirus on board than they let on. They choose to swab a very small group of people. You don't test, you don't know, you bury your head in the sand. Tonight, we reveal the bonuses cruise companies pay to senior management incentivising them to sweep things under the carpet. They're trying to cover up this epidemic. They're trying to take no responsibility when clearly they've led to the spread of this pandemic. It was unbelievable. It's like the Wild West, what happened in Australia. Do you look back at the last couple of months and think, what happened? Yeah, I'd like to start 2020 again, I think. When Tony Londero and his wife Kerry were waiting to board what was to become the infamous last cruise of the Ruby Princess in March, they could never have predicted the dire turn their journey would take. We are in uncharted territory. Three days after they left, COVID-19 was declared a pandemic. But Tony said they weren't worried because their travelling companions had been told by Princess Cruises a week out from the voyage that it was still safe to sail. They said, yeah, it's, it's fine. We'll be screening and uh, you'll be fine. So, so that helped allay our fears. You were effectively being guided by Princess Cruises at that point. They said it's good to go and that made you feel comfortable. Yeah, that did make us feel comfortable. Despite those assurances, eight days into the trip, Tony came down with flu-like symptoms. So he decided to take himself to the onboard medical centre. Did they discuss coronavirus with you in the medical centre there? The doctor didn't believe I had coronavirus, but we did, it was mentioned, yes. She believed I had something that was stressing my heart. Uh, a flu or something like that was causing the heart to do crazy things. It seems a little bit hard to believe in that you've got flu-like symptoms that they've tested you here for influenza A and influenza B. You've come back negative to both of those. So what is this mystery crazy illness a, a, as you just described it? Mm. Sounds silly now, doesn't it? <laughs> but um, now it's so obvious. Tony's health deteriorated rapidly. And less than three days later, this is how he left the Ruby Princess when it docked in the middle of the night in Sydney on March 19. Paramedics, covered in PPE, loaded him into an ambulance. Strangely, doctors on board were still adamant he wasn't suffering coronavirus, instead telling New South Wales health officials Tony's heart was failing. But when he got to Royal Prince Alfred Hospital, he tested positive to the virus. He's now one of more than 600 passengers who caught COVID-19 off that one Ruby Princess cruise. Once a doctor says to you, you've got COVID-19, did you start to think, this could kill me? Yes, I was feeling very ill at that stage. I, I got a lot worse. I'd actually had a seizure in the emergency department. So I was you know, very fearful for my life and yeah, that it was a real struggle, yep. How irresponsible and reckless to board in Sydney, disembark all these passengers, not testing the majority of them um, and allowing them to expose the Australian residents with this virus. 
Debbie Chalik is a Florida-based lawyer now suing Princess Cruises on behalf of dozens of US-based Ruby Princess passengers. She says it's extraordinary that the ship had more than 100 people on board reporting respiratory infection, but only 15 were actually tested for coronavirus. It's a pretty simple uh, process we see here. If you don't test anyone for coronavirus, you can't have anyone confirmed with coronavirus. That, that sounds like exactly the message they wanted their staff to know. You know, they, they did not want high numbers of people tested because the more that you test, the more you'll find out are positive. Princess Cruises knew better than anyone about the rapid spread of coronavirus on ships and the drama that causes when docking. Australian passengers were locked in cabins for two The Diamond weeks. Princess ended up being stuck in Japan for weeks in February, with more than 700 passengers eventually testing positive to COVID-19. Another day in limbo for thousands of passengers. Then in March, the Grand Princess was stopped from docking by the US government, again with numerous cases on board. It cost the cruise company millions. Princess Cruz has already knew from the debacle with the Grand Princess in California that if you declare ahead how many passengers on board have contracted the virus, the President Trump said, well, no, you're not allowed to dock here then. They clearly weren't going to make that same mistake in Sydney. Yeah, clearly they did not want to be honest with the Australian government about how many infections were aboard their ship because they'd have to go through that whole process yet again and probably would not have been allowed to dock. They didn't want to lose more money yet again. It turns out it's not just cruise companies that lose money when ships are delayed. We can reveal that senior staff on board have a big financial incentive as well. A whistleblower who's a senior officer has shown us a contract that details the lucrative bonus incentives for management if they can avoid any government interference when a ship docks, basically get in and out of port as quickly as possible. There are uh, discretionary bonuses that can be paid to the senior executives on the cruise ships. Jim Walker has been fighting major cruise companies in courtrooms for more than 30 years, so he certainly knows all about their tactics. He worries that senior executive bonuses could have discouraged the reporting of coronavirus on board cruise ships. So they have an executive committee uh, that uh, monitors the profitability of all their operations, and there are bonuses that can go directly to many members of, of the executive committee uh, when they keep their expenses down and their profits up. Princess Cruises has admitted to 60 Minutes it does have a bonus scheme relating to the company's overall performance but denies passing on incentives to avoid any delays. And when it comes to generating profits, Jim believes nothing is off limits for them. Even treating sick passengers can be a money spinner. The medical centres on board there for the good of patients' health or there for the good of the cruise ships, bottom line. Ship infirmaries have a sole purpose of making a profit for the cruise line, so the profit comes from the passengers who go down and they end up paying four or five or six hundred dollars for a basic uh, you know 15 minute consultation with minimal uh, medicine being provided on board princess ships just to go to the medical center will set you back hundred and fifty dollars and if you need an after hours service that almost doubles to two hundred and eighty dollars they're fleecing their passengers. They treat their passengers like walking ATMs. The prohibitive cost structure of the medical centres on board these cruise ships, I mean, did it almost serve in the end as a convenient way to cover up the level of coronavirus on board the Ruby Princess? If you can knock out a good portion of the, of the passengers who are going to be test positive because you make it too expensive for them to show up at the infirmary. Yes, I, I wouldn't hesitate in saying they're trying to cover up their problem. Should all medical checks then have been made free for passengers? Sure, they, they should have provided free of charge medical treatment. I mean, you can't have a situation where people are reluctant to go to the ship infirmary because they're, char they're being afraid of being charged for, for the services that are to be provided. Tony Londero was one who did go to the medical centre. 
but before he was even stretched off the ship, Princess Cruises had already drained eight and a half thousand dollars in medical costs from his credit card. When you're very ill, it's, it's very hard to have that other stress, like if you're having a heart attack or, or struggling to breathe, to have that other stress of trying to find um, that money. Um, I had to sort of transfer some money from one account to another, and uh, that it left us broke uh, as we come off the ship. When the crews finally docked here, doctors on board claimed that neither Tony or any other passengers had coronavirus. So it raised eyebrows last week when at the Special Commission of Inquiry into the Ruby Princess, the ship's senior doctor admitted she'd told paramedics taking Tony to hospital they must be wearing full PPE, which looking back now, seems like an unusual request for a patient who was apparently suffering a heart condition. I would have just said they need to go to a hospital and they need to have the appropriate, the ambulance and the staff need to have the appropriate PPE in place. And It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that if you're telling ambulance workers to show up covered in PPE in advance before coming near these passengers, then you're suspecting COVID-19. Tony is finally COVID negative but he's still recovering from that brutal bout of coronavirus. He's now one of 600 passengers, part of an Australian class action against Princess Cruises. This week, Princess Cruises told us all passengers with respiratory illness will have had their medical expenses refunded, but Tony is yet to see a cent. And there's still one thing that all the money in the world won't change for him. You ever go on a cruise ship again? I gotta say, I'll never, ever, 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 ever go on a cruise again. Jim, what would you say to any Australians out there right now that are still thinking about booking a, a cruising holiday in the future? I, I would suggest that you consider other options, quite frankly. So if someone contacts us and says, well, I didn't have a good cruise, my, what I'm thinking is you got off that cruise with your, your, your life, and you should be thankful for that. We, we've had, I can't tell you how many dozens and dozens of passengers who go on a vacation cruise with their loved ones and they get off in a body bag. It's not a, a safe place to be. You're, you're really risking your, your, your life and the life of, of your loved ones uh, in going on a cruise. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.